here we are here and we've gone live and I'm joined by Sophia Lee uh, uh, who is located in California is that correct Sophia? Yeah, in Southern California yeah Southern California wow and uh, very early here it must be later there in the day <laughs> yeah that's true yeah uh, is it getting um, better yeah yeah Sophia I'm uh, very appreciative of, of you joining me uh, I'm going to be speaking with an audience uh, in across Austral uh, different audiences across Australasia in the next, uh, particularly the next six months. And uh, people are very, very curious as to uh, the people behind um, uh, the development of digital eyewear. And and I'm privileged to be able to speak with you. Uh, can you give us an idea as to what your uh, role is and your interests around this area? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, actually, I'm a software engineer and in the visual reality or the augmented reality domain. And uh, I have uh, um, several the eyewears to play with, and the recently is Google Glass and so hit. Um, the special thing about that is um, Google Glass is a new concept for the personal uh, experience. Um, it is uh, better the interactive, and you can use your word command to give the order and it re um, respond pretty quickly. And at the same side, and uh, people are um, focused more on the technical side because there's uh, running on Android system, and uh, we put some apps on that and to. Um, make it another platform as um, the the new the experience to see what they can do. And uh, I have done some simple demos on the the glass and the, for some of the uh, AR apps and to give the the new um, idea of what the future technology will be as in science fiction uh, stories. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it's inspiring to think that. Uh, I believe, and and for the audience, um, would be very curious as to how old you are and uh, how you managed, you know, how you've become a software engineer. So, can you give us a little bit of a background on how you became a software engineer? Well, um, I'm actually only fresh out of school for my graduate school, so I'm only 25 years old. And uh, how I become the software engineer is sent to my dad. Is a professor in computer graphics, and uh -huh. uh, when I was little, I was looking at him all the time. He's really smart, and he's uh, working so hard. And the most uh, um, touching thing is that every time I look at him, he's just so enjoy his work and never feel tired, and always so energetic about how to make changes to the world, how to contribute more. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. his um, motivation for me to join this field as well. Definitely, uh, Sophia. <laughs> I, I, I'm uh, I'm very um, touched with uh, the fact that um, the developments that I hear that you have uh, been involved with uh, are, are really real game changers, I suppose, for uh, for industry and for uh, other you know for other uh, organisations and so on. I'm particularly interested in the educational side of how this particular technology could be used, but of course there's a you know, the technology itself, it's really developing very fast and lots of people are right. getting into the space and developing apps and so on. Can you give us an idea as to how you think glass might be used in the future within industry and within uh, and other organizations? Well, I think um, the AR technology is still new and um, um, the, um, people have a more proof of concept apps to see how that could work in the future. Um, mm. Um, the th I think it's, um, it's pretty, uh, for example, the glass is very convenient for students to um, record what the professor is talking about and just do the voice search and uh, what the some concept is or take the quick memo and uh, what the things that they, they need to do or they, they study more. And I think mm. uh, there's a, a, give a, a better idea for the traditional class you know, for a traditional classroom, the professor are writing on the board and the student are watching. And for those things, the AR technology, it makes they give a new interactive way and you can actually 
um, do different people have different experience, and uh, there can do something like the images or the explanations will pop up on top of your head and uh, have a better understanding. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that could be that, fine. Yeah, it could be. Do, do you picture the professor themselves wearing glass as well? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, because right. um, yeah, I think for the professor that gives them a new way to teach, you know, there's a still a interactive way, and maybe mm. when they're talking, they're giving the same class, but they can give the different um, experience for the students. They can search for um, the source or what they just come up with the idea at that moment, and that can uh, keep the record of what they come up with, and then. Um, Give the a list of source and the, what he found is interesting or relative at that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a real what you're picturing there for me, or what you've described is is a is a different connectivity. It's a different way of um, you know being in touch with each other and having information provided to us, or in fact providing information back into that system. So how I understand it, Sophia, is that some of the things you're developing are connecting. Google Glass with a uh, content management system of an organization. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. And I think the AR is really need a really powerful cloud-based server. And there maybe it's because they um, there's the record a lot of our uh, rendering stuff and show up things. So they need the servers to back and forth so train um, communicate with some data and something. And so, yeah, the interactive something is really important at that time because you don't want to see the the movie or some like the images that got stuck or something. That would be sad. Mm hmm. And 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 just uh, just two more questions, if I may, um, Sophia. Uh, in Australia, we are going to conduct a a conference called Data Minds. M I N D S, and that's in, it's in about about this time next year. It might seem like a long time to go, but it will come in very quickly. And we're looking at the role that uh, this connectivity has, this these new technologies, and how that data from from that experience is then uh, you know provided for the learner to 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 examine what they're doing in their in their learning experience. I'm wondering. Sophia, do you see a role for Google Glass um, in, in not just within industry and within the educational context? What other areas do you think digital glass will have an impact on? Well, I think for the um, for the games industry <laughs> or some like three uh, D content that could be used for entertainment and education and uh, for even people's uh, daily life. And I remember in the movie Airman, and I'm really um, impressed about that thing technology. You know, when you when he dress up the suits and something like the more smart the computer can go, and the interactive can give them more uh, instructions, and even before he's actually talking. So that could be um, the science fiction. But now we hmm. see the possibility that we're going to near that thing. That will be cool. So yeah, and there's a there's a um, there's a big parallel there, isn't between science fiction and the reality of these these um, these technologies. And on that on that very point, Sophia, it it has been a real challenge, hasn't it, to bring uh, digital right. glass and the eyewear uh, to a reality that actually is is operational and so on. And um, can you tell us some, perhaps some of just some of the challenges, not particularly the, the organisations, but just some of the challenges that you've faced so far as a software developer for digital eyewear? Well, yeah, um, I was uh, trying to do some AR um, application on the glass, and the thing is that uh, the rendering is pretty slow. And uh, for example, if I want to render some virtual teapot, and when I move my head, and there's a lot of lags, and uh, it's not that rendering smoothly as I use my smartphone. So mm -hmm. that could be uh, those the hardware improvements or the software um, optimization. And actually, um, I think there's pretty um, severe issues for the um, the apps, the the AR app based apps on the glass. 
and also because the the camera issue and it generates a huge amount of heat when you um, keep the camera on all the times. So it's a little concern to wear that for a longer time. Yeah. Mm, so so it is it generates <laughs> physical it generates physical heat, does it? In the yeah, I can feel like this oh. part. Yeah. So, yeah. um, oh. so I think that could be improved by the the hardware is mm. not hard in the near future, right? So I'm not too much concerned about that. Yeah. Mm. And also mm. things you the the chip for the um chipset for the glasses so it's more they make that beautiful design, really great work, but. Yeah, and it's a, the function is a sort of a limited. Uh, they will improve that, and we can do yeah. from software as well. That's right. This is only really the first of a digital prototype, uh, prototype for for Google. So there's bound to be many other iterations of this particular device. I'm just interested, Sophia, do you wear the device in in you know in a social setting with your friends, family, or anyone around, or is it are you mainly using it in a in a workplace context? Well, uh, yeah, I wear it sometimes because I go to some place. I just uh, take the images or keep the record of my life. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, do people? How do people react to you wearing glass? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I just wear that. So I'll go everywhere. Sometimes I've been stopped by people and they're talking about that and they want to try that. I'm so excited to see what the future is. Yeah, it's sort of interesting. And that's. That's a very good point for us uh, to leave on. They're very excited to see where the future is and where it's going, yeah. and perhaps where it is currently at this point. Sophia, it's taken a lot of time for us to organize this, but I'm very, very appreciative of you joining me. This, rec this recording is going live into the Inspire YouTube channel, and Sophia, mm -hmm. I, I have put your name forward uh, to the director of this organization uh, to be one of our speakers at the upcoming Data Minds Conference next year. And I hope to keep in contact with you over this period of time, and 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 um, and you know revisit things perhaps in in a couple of months' time and see where things are at for you with with your development in this area. Mm -hmm. So thank you very cool. much. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll Bye. speak with you soon. Thanks, Sophia. Much sure. appreciated. I love to help. Bye. Bye.